As we look into the readings today, we find that Jesus teaches his disciples a new commandment, love one another. After disciples have made the commitment to follow Jesus, to love Jesus, Jesus draws them closer and he says to them, I give you a new commandment, love one another. As I have loved you, so you also should love one another. But Jesus doesn't stop there. He continues on and says, by this love, all men will know that you are my disciples. My dear brothers and sisters, this is a heavy message. The Lord commands us to love one another. God gives the world free will to observe your life in the way you treat one another, in the way you respond to one another, in the way you sacrifice for one another. The world, permitted by God, can come to a conclusion on whether you are a disciple or not. C.S. Lewis once called this the great gamble. What a chance God took. I mean, what a chance God took to put his kingdom into our hands and allow the world to know God based on the way we love one another. When I think about the commandment, love one another, I think about the relationships or daily interactions we have. Do we demonstrate the love of God in our families, in the way we treat our spouse in front of our children, in the way we treat our relatives or when we gather in family reunions and perhaps even during the holidays? What about our colleagues at work? Are we patient with those who are difficult to work with? Let's consider all our relationships and daily interactions, then ask ourselves, do we really demonstrate God's love to others? Can the world conclude, ah, that person is a disciple of Jesus? Dear friends, we are called to give our lives to Jesus in such a way that our witness proclaims his message of love. To the world. Now think about that for a moment. Jesus is commanding us to love. But what if I don't feel like loving someone? Well, God's love is not dependent upon emotions or feelings, it is a verb. You love. You sacrifice, you give your life for others, and I might add, it is an eternal love. And speaking of eternity, the book of Revelation has a lot to say about the future. And this weekend, John says, and I quote, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. I saw a new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. That's us. Jesus is the groom. We are his bride, the church. We are the church. We are the bride adorned in white, which scripture 
alludes to that a lot. That is the work we do in the way we treat one another. I want to remind you today that we as Christians, as disciples and followers of Christ, are called by grace to show the world who Christ is by simply the way we treat one another. This I can say, you are God's visible light in our world. As you walk down that street, as you leave these doors, this candle becomes you in the world. And if for some reason there is perhaps a struggle bringing his light to the world or to others, go back to the Lord. Receive that forgiveness through the sacrament of, conf of confession. And then go forth once again to love again. May our celebration of the Eucharist and each celebration of the Eucharist, especially during this Easter season, remind us of this, that as Christ came into the world to be the light of the world, we too now become the bearers of that light to our world. That as we receive him today, we bring his light to others. And may that celebration, may this celebration of the Eucharist also remind us that if for some reason we are having a little bit of trouble, a little bit of difficulty bringing that light, may Jesus that you will hold in your hand continue to inspire you to love more, to love again, and perhaps to love better. Amen.